I'm confused. I'm made of the confused. I can't possibly be a psycho. Did I say you could come out of there? You invite people into your dungeon. They think they can come and go as they please. <laughs> All joking aside, this tag was going around for a minute and it was really fun to watch everybody doing it. And I had the toughest time trying to figure out which character I could talk about for this tag, even though I really wanted to do it. And I just, yeah, yeah I, got, I got nothing, my friend. So we're gonna talk about Sheltered for the Damned by Mike Thorne. Because I've been wanting to. This one came out in like February, right, right? So in case you can't remember the synopsis, let's go over that shit. While looking for a secret place to smoke cigarettes with his two best friends, troubled teenager Mark discovers a mysterious shack in a suburban field. Alienated from his parents and peers, Mark finds within the shack an escape greater than anything he has ever experienced. <laughs> But it isn't long before the place begins revealing its strange, powerful sentience. And I want something in exchange for the shelter it provides. Shelter for the Damned is not only a scary, fast-paced horror novel, but also an unflinching study of suburban violence, masculine conditioning, and adolescent rage. Dude. I think I, I spent like those fucking lights, they go off, they come back on. I think I spent about half the book before I realized this is in first person. Damn, Mike. You feel so, like, with any of his characters, Mike really puts you in it. Like, you feel like you are that character. Like, you're in that world. You may not have no idea what the fuck's going on, but you're about to. Maybe. <laughs> and you know me, I'm finicky about spoilers, so I have a tendency to until I just like, Amy, you can't do that. And I edit it out or I warn you. Let's check over my notes because it's been a minute. I have a note, interesting insights from a shitster. Ah, the sentence, Adam could be violent the way most people can blink. Dude. This is one of those stories with a character where like, you know, it's fictional until you are identifying more than you expected to. <laughs> You're like, I get that. I fucking get that. I get that. There's just so freaking much to unpack with this one. Huh. This note, this character makes me feel like a psych student trying to read something by choice. But I just keep diagnosing. I just keep going, oh, oh, okay, all right, okay. Damn, damn, damn. Well, that was the wrong time to swig tea. <laughs> Oh, that's right. There was, it was, I was the one swigging tea. Yet again, someone's making me spit out my tea and choke on it because I'm like, <laughs> you little shit. Ooh, ooh. I found my note that said I can read something. Let's read this part. Mark bit into the sandwich. He ignored his body's pressure, which quite irrationally tried to send the food back out. He held it down, drank some milk, and walked back up to his room. He sat at his desk and stared at his blank notebook with indifference shoved it aside, then picked up a social studies textbook from the floor. As he cracked the book open, there was a loud and abrupt thump from behind. He jerked his head at the sound, expecting to see that his stand-up lamp had toppled onto the floor. Damn thing was getting old and its foundation was wobbly. He was puzzled to see, though, that the crooked lamp was still upright. He sat in silence for a moment, maintaining a level gaze and trying to think of possible sources for the noise. Maybe something had fallen over inside his closet? God knew it was a mess in there, and there were plenty of boxes that were defying gravity on the top shelf. <laughs> Who does that? Yes, something must have fallen. That must have been it. He advanced toward the closet to pick up whatever had been dropped. Words, Mike. Whatever had been dropped. Damn. Anyway, as he crossed the carpet, he heard the same sound again. Not once, but twice. Consecutive thumps, like a hammer driving a nail. 
The volume and suddenness startled him. He retreated a step and gulped a scream that was fighting to get out. His chest tightened. Dude! Dude! Whoa. That's all I'm going to give you because I'm not fucking giving this shit away. <laughs> this note is just simply wow. Point A to point B, Mark. <laughs> this motherfucker. There was a point where my autistic brain was like, well, what about his shoes? Did he grab his shoes on the way out? <laughs> I was very concerned about the motherfucker's feet. <laughs> I don't know why. It's not you, it's me. There was definitely a part where I was like, And then another part was like, ha! So thanks for that experience. It was great. I love feeling smart. <laughs> and then the same page. Wait, what? <laughs> he giveth, he take it away. Dude, there's some serious imagery. If you're used to his shorts and his collections and shit, and you're used to this like visceral experience, like this is just long form. <laughs> this is just getting to spend a bit of extra time with Mike instead of just a short story. Not just, but you know what I mean. Like, I want, like when reading, I read Darkest Hours before I read Shelter for the Dam and I was like, I want more. I want to hang for a moment. And I was very happy with this one. I don't know if that's necessarily what you would, you know, like, you know, like, ah, horror fans, whatever. So, <laughs> so seriously, five stars. This... <laughs> I have difficulty trying to figure out how to talk about this one with my finickiness about spoilers and shit. And I really, really, really just want you to go down this trip with Mike, all right? I really want you to experience Mark and Mark's damn brain and just, there's so fucking much that happens. <laughs> so much happens and I don't want to take that away from you any more than I want it taken away from myself. So I guess just uh, this, this is the struggle that I have with being a part of booktube. Maybe I should, I don't know. Lately I've been wondering if I should just leave it to you guys because you do such a lovely job and I'm like, it was great. <laughs> or not. <laughs> but seriously, there are many, many reasons why Mike Thorne has swiftly become one of my favorite horror writers in just a year alone with three different releases goodness we've been spoiled i mean at least some good things came out of this there are things where you'll think like oh all right and mike's like nah and then there are things where he's like and you're like cool and then you're like whoa 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 because it goes very bizarro and you're like where the fuck are we going dude holy fucking shit and you're just like sitting in the palm of his hand oh so content about it <laughs> that's he's mike is one of those writers where that's just what you do just sit back relax maybe grab your ankles i don't know but you're going on a ride and it's gonna be fucking great five stars check it out i highly recommend seriously okay before I do fangirl out on this shit and spoil everything for you, until next time and beyond, please take care. I'm trying as well. Motherfucker, I want to go to Lotus. Lotus cycle, go by first. I don't mind motorcycles unless they interrupt my shit. Yep, that's alienated. I looked at a word and I was like, what are you? Oh. Too late. And now we have barking dogs. Motherfucker.